This is how 3D models were made. On the section images of the cadaver, outlines of the structures were successively drawn. The outlines were stacked. The gaps between the outlines were filled with triangular surfaces. This is called surface reconstruction. The outlines were erased and the number of the triangular surfaces was suitably decreased. Unlike the 3D models that were made subjectively, our 3D models were made objectively. Therefore, our 3D models were presented on numerous international scientific journals. Also, these 3D models can be embedded on the sectioned images. I hope that you learn anatomy easily and pleasantly using the 3D models we've created. The skull is formed by many bones, and these bones do not move because they are solidly attached. The only exception is the mandible, which can be removed from the skull. The bone which is located at where you wear your tie is the sternum. At the sternum, the clavicle and rib is attached. The lumbar vertebrae and sacrum, which are part of the vertebral column, can be seen. And the hip bone, which is attached to the sacrum, can also be seen. The sacrum and hip bones form a barrier of the pelvis. The clavicle is connected to the scapula, and the scapula is connected to the humerus. Therefore, the clavicle and scapula can be seen as bones that connect the torso and the arms. The humerus is connected with the ulna and radius at the elbow joint. The bone at the pinky is the ulna, and the radius is located at the thumb. The ulna and radius are connected to the carpal bones at the wrist joint. The carpal bones consist of eight bones. The carpal bones and metacarpal bones are bones located in the palm. There are five metacarpal bones and each of them are connected with phalanges. The vertebral column is formed by the cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, and coccyx, all in that order. The cervical vertebrae consist of seven bones. The ones connected to the ribs are the thoracic vertebrae. And since the ribs consist of 12 pairs, the thoracic vertebrae also consist of 12 pairs. The lumbar vertebrae consist of five bones and the sacrum and coccyx are both single bones. The hip bone is connected to the femur at the hip joint. Therefore, the hip bones can be seen as bones that connect the torso to the legs. 
The femur is connected to the patella and tibia at the knee joint. The tibia is connected to seven tarsal bones at the ankle joint. The tarsal bones are connected to five metatarsal bones, and the metatarsal bones are connected to the phalanges. Don't the bones in the arms and legs look very similar? Between the knee joint and ankle joint, there is not only the tibia, but there is also the fibula. It is similar to having two bones between the elbow joint and wrist joint. The tibia, which is comparatively larger than the fibula, can be easily touched while the fibula cannot easily be touched. This person died lying down. Therefore, the ankle joint is curved on the plantar side, and it looks as though performing ballet.